All right. So I got my QBs done today, most of them. I still got to do my centers. They need a radius on on one side. They're just they're just little rectangles right now. But I got everything else done today, which is fucking exciting as shit. So I got like tons and tons of QBs all made out of metal. And the shitty part is to get these machining marks off of them, I gotta polish them all. I just polished one with 80 grit and and just the interior, I didn't even do the exterior ones. Those ones I'll, I'll take special care with, but and it took for goddamn ever. It was awful. I gotta do that a ton more times, so. And then I gotta go, I mean, once I, once I get the machining marks off of it, you know, like these little deals, and get it roughed like that, then I can hit them all pretty quick. But considering how long that took, I think I'm gonna be polishing these motherfuckers for a month to get them, you know, looking like glass, like, like I want. So. Cubies! And that's all I wanted to talk about as far as the magnetic, or not magnetic, the aluminum cube project goes. Like, I gotta do this, and I gotta do my core. And this fucker's done. I'm, I'm pretty sure I'll have a working cube by next weekend. Won't be the way I want it. Like, I'm gonna put a bunch of other stuff on it, and I gotta put um, little screw holes and, and set screws so that I can get an anode, so it looks super cool. But, and you know, and, and then I'll definitely polish all the faces and stuff. But, but that's in the future, one problem at a time. So, anyway, here's a continuation of my philosophy rants. Go. Emery cloth, it's everywhere. Holy shit. Alright, so we're still doing mathematics, logical systems, and con er, uh, consciousness. Here's what I have to say. So, just a real quick plug for this too, God Created the Integers. Um, there's another book too called um, On the Shoulders of Giants. They're both books compiled by Stephen Hawking of just really wonderful um, papers written about mathematics generally historically, so there probably are some point per a, um, articles in, in one of the two of these, and they're just, it, an understanding of mathematics to me is, it's just crucial, and it's, it's weird that not more people have it, because it's not that hard, it, it's just, something about mathematics, people, like, they, they hear algebra and they get fucking scared for some reason or something like it, and I think a lot of it is the school systems like we're, we're not taught to think like this this is a different definitely different mode of thinking you know thinking in a logically formal system is it's a, it's, an, it's an entirely different tool set I guess is what you would call it and so struggle through it, but it, um, these two books compiled by Hawking are, are really good. God created the integers and um, On the Shoulders of the Giants. Very good. I own both. I haven't read them all because they're both, you know, they're both like 1,500 pages long, give or take. So just 3,000 pages of dense math stuff written by, you know, everyone and anyone. But definitely worth checking out, you know, somebody talks about Benford's Law or Cantor's monster, Monsters or you know Mandelbrot tessellations or whatever you, you can like bust one of these out and be like mm, I'm sure that's in here somewhere and it's got you know all the all the diagrams for stuff and works through 
through everything. And I think he even does um, little introductions to help you understand exactly what's going on, you know, especially when you get um, into really heavy, uh, like here's, here's Euler. I'm sure there's some really heavy notation in here, yeah. <laughs> Where when it gets like this, he kind of helps you take a step back and go, okay, this is, you know, this is what this is supposed to be. Even if, you know, even if you are really familiar with summation notation and, you know, just because we were looking at Euler, summation notation and, and sums and series and things like that, a lot of times it just gets so dense that you don't even know what they're getting at. And he'll be like, this is what they're trying to explain. And then you read and go, oh, I, I see that, I see that now. When, when he's talking about nth notations, that's, that's what's supposed to be happening here. It's supposed to equal two. Bad math joke, gotta throw it in there. An infinite number of mathematicians walk into a bar. The first one orders beer, the second one orders a half a beer, the third one orders a quarter of beer, the fourth one orders an eighth of beer. And by about the sixteenth one, the bartender just gets really pissed, calls them all assholes, and pours them two beers. So, as I'm off on numbers, I had to had to include this one in since I was talking about talking compilations. Um, anything, by the way, that says as I'm off on is an awesome book. That that's all you need to know. He, he's done as I'm off on geology. I just got as I'm off on chemistry. Um, I've read as And the only thing I wanted to bring up about this, and it, it kind of has to do with, you know, the whole idea of what, like, knowledge and truth are and stuff like that. And then there's a wonderful story in here um, where he's talking to a sociology professor. And the so sociology professor um, is teaching this class. And in the class, he um, classifies uh, mathematicians with, like, shamans. Oh, it's going to bother me now. Mysticists. He, he calls them mystics, you know. He says, like, mathematics is just as mystical as witch doctor. And, and so Asimov being... Asimov was an asshole. He was really intelligent, and I love reading his work, but he was a pompous fucking asshole. That's all there is to it. And so Asimov gets really mad at him because, you know, face about it and he's like mathematicians are not mystics those are two totally different things and the professor gets real smug and, and, and goes okay you know what show me the square root of negative one pieces of chalk and Asimov being smart and a smug asshole becomes very smug and goes okay I'll do that if you can show me a half a piece of chalk. And so the professor, and they're like just in a smug battle over this, you know. The professor gets more smug and he picks up a piece of chalk and he breaks it in half and he hands a piece to, to Asimov and, and goes, there's your half a piece of chalk. And Asimov turns around and goes, I don't think anybody's can contest me, but how many people would argue that this isn't one piece of chalk? Anyone? Anyone? One piece of chalk. I am holding a piece of chalk. And the mathematics professor gets really fucking huffy with him. And goes, well, no, no, no. I took a piece of chalk and I broke it in half. So it's a half a piece of chalk. And he goes, no, you just made two pieces of chalk. What you did is you made the assumption that when I said half a piece of chalk, I meant half a piece of a standard size of chalk or standard size piece of chalk. And he goes, okay, well, you have to grant me that assumption. And he goes, well, no, I don't. But even if I do, prove to me that that's not like 0.52 of a standard piece of chalk or 0.37 of a standard piece of chalk. Like, prove to me you broke it exactly in half. That is exactly one half of a piece of chalk down to the particle. 
And so then the, the professor's really fucking huffy and starts going off on him and, and uh, you know, and then basically ends his rant with, with something to the extent, well, like, I don't see what this has to do with the square root of negative one. And he goes, and Asimov basically says, well, if you don't understand the nation, or the nature of, like, rational numbers, why should I even talk to you about the nature of irrational numbers? If you can't talk to me about a half because you understand it so little, why the fuck should I even bother talking to you about it? You, you obviously have such a, a, a shitty understanding of mathematics that it would be like arguing with a post and gets kicked out of the class but walks out super smug and happy with himself. Anyway, but he has a point, which is the only reason I included this one was just for that particular story. He has a point, you know, people that try and argue about knowledge and truth, but they have such a, sh like, small, non-faceted understanding of what it actually is, it's just useless trying to argue with them, because it's, it's arguing with the post, you know, it's, it's like trying to argue with a Christian about knowledge, and they're just like, well, I have faith. It's like, well, it's nice to have a cop out like that. You know, I wish I could just be arguing with somebody about politics and be like, well, I have squids, and that automatically makes my position right. Every other baby should be killed. Well, that's immoral. You, you have no good reason to believe that. And I go, I have squids. I have faith that every other belief or, you know, that every other baby should be killed. I have faith that that's true. And now you can't argue against it. Like, that's just so silly. Why we, you know, we can't apply it to everyday life. Why we apply it to, like, gigantic questions, like what happens when we die or what's in the universe outside us. I mean, why, why we can be so intellectually lax intellectually lax when it comes to things like that and then just be so stringent when it become when it comes to things like buying a car like you walk up to a used car lot that motherfucker every word out of his mouth you're like he's lying he's lying you are the ultimate skeptic but then you're like what happens when i die for the rest of eternity i'll take it on faith it came out of some book don't really know where the book came from. Haven't even really read the book. My pastor tells me about it. He, he's, I think he's read the book. And, and just to like be so okay with being so intellectually lazy with that idea, it just, not to use this word too many times, baffling, absolutely baffling. All right, so two more books to get through. I think I can do it in the next talk, but we'll see. And this is just the first in the series of talks, just so everyone knows. And blah blah blah. So yeah, I have scratched the surface of my philosophy, and it took me. I don't even know how many videos, probably six videos. So we even see, they're not getting very good reviews, well, they're not getting any reviews, they're getting zero comments, which is fine, I guess, no one hates them either, that's, that's cool, but, yeah, they're not getting that many views, I may need to, like, put some more tags on them or something, oh wait, I forgot. I don't give a shit if people watch them. So, either way, my philosophy is floating around in the ether right now. That's all I give a shit about. Anyone who watched it, big ups to you. Anyone who didn't, uh, you can't hear a word I say. So, 